I want to ask y'all something here tonight. How serious is your recovery to you here tonight? And secondly, how important is God to you tonight? Are you trying to do everything you can within your power to fix your problems, to stay clean, to live your life like you want to, and try to beat the odds with your own strength? I will tell you here tonight, if you're trying to do that, you're going to lose the race. But I want you to understand here tonight that it's the power of God that's going to make you win that race. Amen. You have to be committed in recovery. You need to be doing this because you know that first, God wants you to live a better life. But second, you need to be a better person than what drugs cause you to be. Also tonight, you need to understand that yes, we have a choice to go use and hide it and not tell nobody and live our little secret life. But at the same time, God knows what you're hiding. You can hide it for months, years before anybody finds out. But God knows what you're doing. He's, he knows what I'm thinking right now. He knows what my plans are before I ever know tomorrow. Our God is big, amen. amen. And we, learn, we, we, we serve a big God. So if you're here tonight and you're down and you're thinking that your life is gone because of drugs and alcohol, maybe you slipped up last week. Maybe you're so ashamed that you can't face the mirror. Maybe you're so ashamed and scared that you can't tell anybody because you're fearful that somebody is going to push you away from them and not have anything to do with you. I get a lot of calls sometimes and the first thing I tell people don't worry about what other people think of you. Don't, don't sit there and lay in it, but you get back up. You get back up on that horse and you ride. Amen? Because, yeah. see, when we worry about what people think, it's going to keep us in a box. You can't worry about those things like that. You need to worry about what God thinks of you here tonight. And I go all the way back to the cross of what Jesus did at Calvary. I think about his commitment that he made, amen, that, that he knew he had to go to the cross and take upon the sins of the whole world. Sins that he had none. Jesus didn't have sins, but he had to take upon our sins, the whole world's sins. You think about deep in your heart what he has done for you, and it should help you face your triggers. Tonight, we're going to be talking about triggers, and I've got some stuff wrote down. But I will tell you this, just because you went to rehab and come home don't mean a lot. It's easy to go to rehab. It's easy to sit in a room for 30, 40, 60 days, six months. You are in a safe zone where you should be anyway. The work starts when you leave rehab and come back to your house. Amen. That's where the work begins. In rehab, you've got counselors that's there for you to talk to you. You've got psych therapists that's there to help you with mental health and depression. You've got coaches there to talk to you at any time of the day, but you're not going to have that when you get home unless you get hooked up with a provider that can give you that kind of service. And a lot of people do not accept that kind of service because they think that they're okay and that they don't need any more help no one need advice from anybody. The reason we started this uh, Tuesday night ministry right here, I know I can't clean nobody up. I tell you right now, I can't help you with your addiction. You are responsible for that. I can't help you until you're ready to make a change. If you're here tonight or watching, and if you feel like you need some help, you need to come to me or somebody and let's look up some resources that we can find you help. Let's work this together. You don't have to work your recovery by yourself, but it is your recovery. Recovery right now, other than God, should be your main priority. Because recovery is what's going to save your life. Recovery is what's going to help you learn the tools in order to face trials and temptations and whatever the situation is. <laughs> But when you come from rehab, 
And if you are so, so much clean, that's great. But I'm going to tell you what gets a lot of people. They come home. They've been gone for however long. They see somebody they hadn't seen in a while. And they want to go help, hang out. And they're thinking, well, this ain't going to hurt nothing. How can I tell my friend I don't want to have nothing to do with him? So you find yourself being in a situation where you're not very comfortable with. Then the next thing you know, somebody breaks out something. Does something in front of you. You go with them somewhere and you got drugs involved. I'm going to tell you something that's dangerous. You can't be clean and still live an addictive lifestyle. You can't have both of them. You've got to learn to give up your life as it was, as you knew it. And the only way that you can truly give up your life, and that's through Christ. And I'm not saying just give Christ your prayers and give Him some of the stuff you want. I remember years ago, I would beg God. I said, God, take the taste of this uh, alcohol and pills out of my mouth. And I said, Lord, if you can't take the taste out or take the pills from me, kill me. That's how miserable I had gotten. That's how far on the edge I was living. And I kept praying, God, how come you're not waking me up and you're not cleaning me up and you're not taking the taste out? You want to know why? Because I didn't fully give God my whole self. I gave him the parts that I wanted to give him, and I held back the parts that Jamie loved and was obsessed with and didn't want to give because I felt like I was going to live a boring life. I want to tell you here tonight also, I don't care how boring my life is now, but I'm content. I love living now. I love myself now. I love my house now. It's nothing more than I'm proud and never been as proud as I am today. Now, I'm not sitting up here standing on the soapbox and asking for claps. I'm not doing this to say, look at Jamie, because Jamie hasn't done anything. I just made up my mind which way I wanted to go. Amen? And that's everybody in here. You've got to figure out in life what's important to you. So what if you lost everything that you had? So what if all your friends have left you? So what if your family has pushed you to the side and said never got come back? You have a loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that loves you the way you are right now. And through Him and with Him, you can rebuild your life. You may not get the people back. You may not get your things back or your money back that you lost. But God's going to put new people in your life. And you're going to look back at your old life and you're going to say, thank God I'm where I'm at today. Thank God that I'm not living in my room anymore doing drugs. Thank God I'm not that person that's dependable no more, that's, that's breaking my family up, hurting my wife, tearing my mom's heart out. Thank God that I don't have to be that person no more. I mean, you do understand here today that each and every one of us, we have a free will choice, amen? When we wake up in the morning, we have a choice not to use. It's like I always tell y'all, when you wake up in the morning and you walk with the Spirit, you're going to be with the Spirit. But if you walk, wake up in the morning and you choose to walk with that flesh, guess where you're going to be all day? You're going to be with that flesh. And I always heard this say too, the people you hang around and the things you do is going to end up causing you to do the same thing and be the same way. So who are you putting yourself around today? Now, I want to be honest tonight. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just being honest because you've got to realize today who and what are you putting yourself around that's causing you to be triggered? What coping skills do you have here tonight to help you understand the places, people, things that you go the things you watch, the things you listen to. What is it? Is that drawing you back to your old life? See, when you're in recovery, it doesn't mean standing still, but it means going forward. That's what recovery means. you got to keep moving forward. You can't look back at the person you used to be. That person's gone. If you're a child of God and you had Christ to come in your heart and you're truly saved, truly born again, you are a changed person. You are a new creation, amen. You're not the same person that you used to be, so stop acting like you are. Stop curving yourself like that uh, old addict again. Stop going around the places that your addict mind used to take you. Stop hanging around the people who brought you down. Tell you something, sometimes your biggest enemies are your family. Amen. 
And I'm just being real here tonight. Amen. A lot of times people go to rehab, come back home. Ain't nothing changed in the house. You have changed. You've got a new mind. You're clean. At least you've been clean for a while. But they said they just can't stay clean because the people they love the most is still using or still drinking. And they fall back in every time. I want to tell you something today. You can take yourself away from that too. It's all kind of places out here, resources that you can go get help. You've got like places like the ARC House for Men. You've got shelters. You've got halfway houses. You've got all kind of things that you can do if you really want to stay clean. There's no excuse that you can't. Amen. Biggest thing I hear is, well, I don't have the money to get an apartment. I don't have this. I don't have that. But it's resources out there. If you work as hard as you did getting high on trying to stay clean, you'll see things change in your life. Yeah. I can tell you that from experience. I started from ground zero. I didn't have the help that they got now. I had to go to my parents and borrow money. I had to go to Shannon's mama and borrow money just to keep our house. I didn't have no classes to go to to, to tell me that it's okay to be the way I am or it's okay, we'll help you. I didn't have that help. I come home, I had drugs all around me, right in my yard. Every day I pull in the driveway, my head looks left. But I had a constant mind. I said, God, protect me for what I see every day. God, don't let that embed in my mind and cause me to react on it. You want to know what? When I come down that driveway now, I don't even know it's another house beside me. And I'm just being honest. The excuses is about to run out now. All of us in here that's addicts and past alcoholics, we know right from wrong. We don't need a meeting to stay clean. Let's be honest. We know how to stay clean, and that's, that's don't use. And another little subject I want to talk on tonight. Might not be a good subject. I might get some frowns. I might get some dislikes. But if I want true to myself, I wouldn't say it. Some people think that they can substitute drugs with other drugs. Marijuana is a drug. Whether it's about to be legal or not, it's a mind-altering drug. You've got to spend money out of your wallet that you don't have to buy it. So what is the difference? Alcohol is a drug. And I'm saying this because a lot of people think that they're okay if they just drink a beer. It don't work that way because that leads to other things. Every time I ever tried to quit, I went back out because of drinking. And I'm telling you a piece of my life tonight that I'm, I'm hoping that would help somebody. I'm not saying this to make you think I'm better than you are. But if it's something I can say to change somebody's life tonight, I'm going to say it. Because if I don't, then I've got to think about the rest of my life when I see somebody pass away. Why didn't you say something? Why didn't you warn somebody? Most everybody here are watching. I don't have to warn you. You know the dangers. Everybody knows that, that fentanyl used to be put in heroin. And I don't like using drug names, but it's important today that you know the facts. They're putting it in everything now. And it's a joke to the drug dealers. They're putting it in there hoping that somebody would die so that their phones would ring off the hook because that's what they call the good stuff. What in the world have our world come to that where people would choose money over lives? And what are we doing? We're falling right back in that trap and going back out and taking a chance with our life. We need to understand today that, that this life we live is very important. If we don't care about it, you've got family member that, members that loves you. You've got family members that's praying for you. That stays up all night wondering if you're going to make a decision to use and go back out and die. See, you have more people worried about you than you realize. But God, you know, is a loving God. God loves us. And I haven't got on these notes I had tonight because I feel like the Holy Spirit is moving tonight and He wants me to tell the truth here tonight. Amen. I'd rather you be mad at me here tonight 
than to me get a phone call tomorrow and have to plan your funeral. I've done too many funerals in the past, and they ain't fun when you have to stand over a grave when it's somebody that you cared about. First thing that hits your mind is, what could I have done different? What else could I have said that would have changed that person's mind about going back out and using it? And then I hear the world talking about addicts, alcoholics. Why can't they just learn? Why can't they just stop? We've got to have locks on everything now. Everybody in the world that does not know anything about drugs are putting the addicts and the alcoholics down like they're a piece of trash. Fifteen years ago, I never had a problem with neither one. And I found myself being that judgmental person like those people I'm talking about. Well, I want to tell you what happened to me. I hurt my back. I had no idea... Three months later, I would be spending $300, $400 a day getting high. I had no idea that my life would end up the way it ended. So if you are out there watching tonight, or maybe here tonight, maybe you've got that judgmental attitude that they did it to the self, I want you to realize that it can happen to you as well. Amen. So instead of putting people down, find out a way that you could pick them up. You know, God's all about love. Well, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, right? Well, we have a job here as Christians. We have a job to love one another. And that means being there for one another through hard times. That means giving up our life to help other people. I think about the crowd we got here tonight. If we just went and talked to one person, can you imagine the impact that would have each week if you just picked one person to talk to? If you just told one person your life and where you're at, don't worry about being perfect. Sometimes the best testimony is telling somebody where you've been. Because you can reach people that I can't reach. I might be able to reach people you can't reach. And we don't have to trip over people to get to them because they're everywhere. Our country is hurting right now. We have teenagers that's being buried because of fentanyl. We have adults that's worked their whole life to earn what they got, lose it in six months. And don't think it's just in drugs. Alcohol will take everything you got too. Right time, place, and situation. You could be in prison the rest of your life. An accident, a harmless one beer accident can put you in prison. It's all kind of things to look at the next time you want to take that drink. Look at your life right now and say, God, I can't believe you brought me this far, but I know you have. And every time you want to go back out and drink or go back out and use, think about where God has put you at in life. Think about if you could see him on the cross, nailed to that cross. And every time you make that bad decision, it's a latch. Cuts deep into him. Jesus went to the cross so that we can be saved from sin. He went to the cross so that we can be happy and free. So we can have a better life to live. But we use depression. We use loss of job. We lose. We use everything in the world to justify our need to use. But the real situation is you wanted to use. That's why you did it. Amen. You want it to. I remember years ago, I was using my mind, so I knew I might as well go on and buy what I need to buy because I've already made reservations here. If you keep bad things in your mind, you're going to do bad things. But if you keep the righteousness stuff of God in here, the Word of God, you ain't going to want to do bad things. You shouldn't want to anyway, amen? But I want to start off right here. I know that took a while. But I needed to say that because we live in a time now where addiction is being pushed to the side. Everything else is more important than saving lives than addiction. At one point, the world was on fire for addiction. Had all kind of seminars, all kind of classes, had this and that place to go to. Nowadays, you don't hear nothing about it. And I will say this, you got some places in Vance County that's willing to help anybody tonight. 
But first, you got to want that help and you got to search for that help. But it says, we need to look at what triggers us to give, to go use or drink again. And I, I pretty much explain that. What triggers you to drink? Is it trauma in your life? Is it a member of your family that just pushes you to the edge to where you can't handle it and you, you just need to go somewhere and relax for a little bit and calm down, whether it be alcohol or whatever it is? What in your life is causing you to be pushed over the edge? You need to figure out what that is and you need to try to, to build a barrier up or you need to go around it or you need to fix it where it don't come in your life. I think about young King David as he was getting ready to face Goliath. As Goliath was so huge and he was so small and all he had was a stone and a slingshot. I thought about his courage and his faith that when he took Goliath out, not only did he kill Goliath, but he cut his head off and held it up. You know what he did? He got rid of, he got rid of the situation. I'm not saying to go harm nobody, but what I'm saying is you have to understand if you keep going out to drink, if you keep going out to use, you've got to get rid of whatever is causing you to be that way. Because if you don't, it's going to cause you a lot of pain. <coughs> It's going to cause you not to stay sober, not to stay clean. You're going to constantly have it dwelling at you because you haven't got rid of the problem. Sometimes it just takes sitting down with somebody and talking. Sometimes that may not work. But you've got to figure out a pattern in your life where you can not have to keep falling and falling. And I talked about, is it the people in your life? Is it things that you put yourself around? Is it places that you go? When we get clean, we have to find ways not to interact with things that trigger us. Do y'all realize here tonight that everybody is responsible for your own actions? I found myself in places that I, I didn't ever want to be. I found myself place, um, self in them places that right now I'm telling everybody else not to have in your life. But sometimes we can do all the right things in the world. And we'll still find ourselves in a bad situation. But we also have a way to remove ourselves. If we get put in that situation, then we need to turn around and walk out. Don't think about it. Don't dwell on it. You need to turn around and walk out. Because the longer you stay there in a place, the more chances are that you're going to talk yourself into messing up. And that's the truth here tonight. Some things we can't stay away from. We can't. Amen. It's things that's going to follow us and haunt us. In my past addiction, I had so many things coming upon me. I had court. I had issues going on. I was scared to death that something, I said, Lord, don't let me get clean and then let me go to jail. Please, Lord. I, I've done this for you. Please, Lord, don't let all this come on me now after I've been clean. But I knew I, I had consequences for what I did. Amen. I knew that I was responsible for the things that I've done. But praise God standing here tonight. I don't, I don't think you listen. Praise God for his mighty power and his love. Amen. I didn't have to face none of those problems. That's right. That's right. Because I chose to totally surrender my life to him. And he knew that I was serious. When I come up to this altar up here, when I was getting high, not this altar, but other churches, I would go to that altar. I would stretch across it. I would give God all my problems. But instead of leaving it here at the altar, I would take it right back with me for safekeeping. You've got to learn to give your whole life to Christ. That means everything. You're bad, you're good, anything that's going to distort your mind to get you back to where you were. You got to be like a baby being born all over again. You got to learn to live yourself a life a different way. Change your habits, change your ways, your character. You got to walk different. You got to talk different. But that's what we got to do, amen. We got to do that to stay clean. You can't mix. You can't mix addictive lifestyle with clean life. It will never work. Because you're sitting there, what you're doing is. You're still lusting, you're, you're lusting, you're not using, but you're lusting over that addictive lifestyle. And eventually, you're going to join back with it. And it always happens. 
A lot of times you wake up and you tell yourself, what happened? What happened? But that's okay, y'all. I want to tell you here tonight that if somebody's messed up, you can make things right with God. You can make things right. But you have to do that. But we can always remove ourselves from people. They say that you become the very thing that you surround yourself with. We talked about that. We need to take a minute and think about what this trigger can do to us. Have you really thought about what this trigger can do? Is it going to send me to prison? Is it going to break up my family? See, this is the choices you've got to make. While you've got the devil on one side of your mind, and the devil is saying, go ahead and do it. Nobody's going to know you did it. One time. But that one time has a lot of consequences to it. When you make bad decisions, it's always consequences that follow you after that. May not be today. Most of y'all know. Some of those consequences happen months later. I had stuff to come up years after my addiction. But God blessed me and God took care of that. And I just hope that helps somebody tonight. I want to go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. And John explains this a lot better than I can. But you've got to understand tonight, no matter what we go through, if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you've been truly born again, we can withstand. Amen? Did y'all hear that? We have the power to overcome our temptations because of what? The Holy Spirit that lives and dwells in us. When you're saved, you should have a love for Christ. You should have a love so much that you ain't going to want to do nothing wrong no more. You ought to have a different heart. You ought to have a changed mind. You ought to have some conviction that when you do wrong, you should be convicted. You should be full of sorrow. If you're still using and you say you're saved and you still can't quit and you're still going out and doing stuff, you have no remorse, you have no conviction, something's wrong somewhere, amen. Because if you're a true child of God, you're going to live a changed life. Do we mess up sometimes? Do we fall down and skin our knees? Yes, we do. We all going to mess up. The Bible says no, there's no one righteous, no, not one. None of us is righteous in here today. But through the Holy Spirit, we can overcome temptation. But see, here's why we don't. We don't put our trust in the Holy Spirit. We try to live our life the way we want to live. And sometimes we'll go ahead and do it. We'll fall down, mess ourselves up. But if you're sitting here tonight and you say you're a child of God, but you have no way to stay clean, something's very wrong, y'all. I'm telling you here tonight with the bottom of my heart. I lived this life. I lived this life. I lived that way. I said things. I've done things. And I'm telling you here, it's going to come a time. To where somebody's going to wish, wish they had made sure they were right with the Lord. Now you might say tonight, Jamie, that sounds, you sound kind of cruel tonight. You sound, you sound like you saying we, we are like this. I'm not saying y'all are like this. I'm, I'm from the bottom of my heart up here trying to tell you that God loves you, amen. amen. That Christ death at the cross at Calvary. It was for a reason. So if we see the mighty work that Jesus did at the cross, why in the world would we want to keep doing this? Why in the world would we be happy living the life we're living? I just can't see myself the way I used to be. It'll bring almost tears to my eyes right now thinking of the life that I live. And see the life that Christ Jesus has given me today. How in the world can I go against him and keep being the person that he died for? Amen? Amen. How can I keep going out here lashing him and breaking his heart and doing the very things that, that my flesh wants to do? 
when he has given his whole life for me. He has given his whole life for you. Can't you see that today? That it doesn't make any difference who you make happy in this world. People want you to use. You need to tell them to go on and get somebody else. But today, I'm not using because I have Jesus in my heart. I have something to live for today. I don't need that drug or drink to fill another void in my heart because my heart is full with the Lord here. That's what we have to understand. We don't need drugs no more in our life. We don't need alcohol. You see what it done to you. You see where it puts you. You see that it costs you to lose everything in your life. So why in the world would you want to go back to that life? That's right. See, Satan is so crafty here. Satan will put doubt in your mind. He'll make you feel alone. He'll give you no peace. He puts things in your head. You get to where you're so bound up you can't think right. But you got to open them ears up and eyes. You got to open that heart to know tonight that Jesus has already defeated the foe. Amen. Amen. He has already got victory here. So if you know that Jesus Christ has victory, put some trust in Him. Put some hope in Him. Go to Him tonight at this altar and say, Jesus, I'm weak. Jesus, I'm coming to you right now. I'm weak. I like to went back out today. I like to use, though I like to drink. But Jesus, I am weak. Please give me the strength to face. Please give me ability to say no. If you honestly go pray like that, you humbly go to Christ. He's going to give you the strength, amen, because you have the Holy Spirit living in you, amen, if you are born again. You might be here tonight, and you might say, Jamie, I run away from God because of some things that he did. Well, first of all, God never makes a mistake. And no matter how much we want to blame our problems on God, we find ourselves doing it. We know in this earth that we're going to lose loved ones. We know that sickness is in this world and we know we're going to go through sickness. We know times are going to be hard on us. We know that we might lose a job. So if you know all this, why do we blame God? A lot of people say, well, God left me. No, you left God. We walked away from God through our despair, our, our, our temptations, you know God is everywhere you go. Think about that. Next time you do something, you don't think God knows. He knows. He's right with you. Ask yourself that old uh, logo or that old saying back in the late 80s or 90s. What would Jesus do? Ask yourself. Would Jesus go out here and do this drug? Nope. Would Jesus go out here and drink and break his family up? Nope. We serve a whole job here today. We serve a mighty king here today. And I praise God for our mighty king. I thank God for what he has did in my life. I thank God for the people here that he's working in your life. And even though tonight, if you don't feel God working, he's working on your problems now. Give him time. He will help you. His timing is different than ours. We need to understand but we've got to depend on him no matter what. Let's read 4-4 four, four right here. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. Amen. Ain't that great? <laughs> I want to read just a little section here for a second. You know, I was telling you about the Holy Spirit once you're saved. The Holy Spirit comes to live and dwell with you. Amen. Now listen. It says the Holy Spirit is within us from the moment of salvation and enables us to say no to temptations. Do I need to say that again? It enables us to say no to temptation. You need to remember that. We can say no today. Because of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Back in the day when you weren't saved, you didn't know God, didn't want no part of Him, you didn't have nothing but your own power. But praise God today, if you just get the concept of how strong and mighty the Holy Spirit is, 
that convicts your heart when you want to do wrong, that teaches you, that comforts you, that loves you, is there with you. It's like having bodyguards around you. If you went somewhere and you had 10 or 12 bodyguards around you, you'd feel a lot comfortable, wouldn't you, than walking by yourself? Well, think about the Holy Spirit that's with you all day, all night, every second of every day. Wouldn't you rather want that power than your power facing troubles? Let's be real with it. So anytime we resist some temptation, overcome some spiritual challenge, or triumph in a contest of faith, we do so because God's Spirit lives in us. We move ahead in our walks. And the Lord, by reliving on his power, relying on his power, not ours. On his power, not ours. Now tonight, I wanted to do something different here tonight. You know, we usually have group right after. I just feel tonight, we're still going to have group. I feel tonight I'm led to, to have the altar call now. Because I truly feel that somebody needs to make things right with God. I truly believe somebody here tonight is struggling with addiction of, of, of any kind. Addiction ain't all food. I mean, drugs, alcohol, it can be a lot of things. It's a lot of things that we struggle with here tonight. And I want to open this altar up. I want us to come up here and pour our heart out to the Lord. And if you're here tonight and you say, Jamie, I want to know Jesus. You can do that as well. I want you to know here tonight that I don't have the power to save anybody. And I want you to know this because I don't. I can't save nobody. But I know one that can. And I know it's my responsibility to tell the flock about Jesus Christ. The reason I'm doing this because I truly believe that there's some hurt hearts out there. I believe that it's things people need to get off their heart with the Lord because they've not been happy. They've been all closed up. They feel like they're pressed down on the floor. I want to tell you, don't ever think that anything's too big for God. God can fix you up here tonight. God can clean your heart up tonight. God can clean your mind. He can get all that baggage off your shoulders only if you're willing to give it to Him. He is sitting right here, right now, where we are. All you got to do is raise your hand and He will pick you up. There's no better feeling to know that you have a loving Savior that's willing to pick you up. Sometimes He'll let us go so far in life and make such a hey! mess I say so. I'm sorry, y'all. For those that don't know, I have Tourette syndrome. That's all right. You didn't. And, and um, no way I don't disrupt the service, but that's fine. I just want to explain myself. You good? I'm a lot better than I was years ago. Amen. Amen. God is good, ain't he? Amen. So I'm gonna go and open this altar. Rob's gonna play a song, but I'm gonna go to a short sentence prayer before we do that. And if you want to be saved, you can repeat after me. Dear Father God, I know you sent your son Jesus to the cross of Calvary. And right now, I'm coming to you, Lord, and I'm admitting that I am a son. Jesus, I know you went to that cross. I know you died. I know you took upon the sins of the whole world who that had none. I know you was buried. I also know you rose on the third day. Right now, Jesus, I'm asking you to come in my heart and save me. Make me whole. Make me clean. Wash me white as snow. Give me the peace that I've been looking for. Give me the love that I've been needing. So thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. We're going to follow it up with this altar call and want to make sure that you understand the second thing you need to do after being saved is get baptized and confess your faith to the whole world. 
You need to get in your Bible, read the Word of God. You need to get discipled and understand the Word of God. You need to get in church. You need to get in Sunday school. You need to get active and live your life for the Lord Jesus Christ. So won't y'all come on up here.